first of all i wanted to welcome everyone good evening everyone how are you i hope everyone is fit and fine a uh, very short introduction about myself my name is megha mala and i am working in lt marketing team and i will be the host of this webinar now coming to a short introduction of the company lt is a unified marketing automation platform for the b2b business team Our parent company is Dejaiz Software Private Limited, a Bangalore-based company that started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platform, Easysend and Alt. So Easysend is mainly focusing on SME and SMB business. Alt is focusing on customers from mid enterprise and enterprise. Around 2K plus companies across globe using Alt and Easysend product platform. From January this year, we are starting get. Deep into India and SME market, SCA market. Now uh, coming to Aritik Live, our webinar series. Uh, we are trying to bring professionals close to the our platform, Aritik platform, through Aritik Live, and it's an online talk show for marketing, sales, business development, and product leaders and working professionals. The talk shows include webinars, on-demand webcast, podcast, and live events from IT and partner networks. So today's webinar topic is financial goal settings and measurement for B2B marketers. And we we have today with us Arjun Ruparelia, and we will be taking through the topics in details. So coming to a short introduction about Mr. Arjun. Arjun is a writer for B2B fintech and marketing brand. He writes content that dives deep, offer SEO value, and resonate with a B2B audience. In the past, he has worked with brands like Eti Money and Shopify. I want to request Arjun if you are going to at some point from your own. What no, I, yeah, I think that perfectly sums it up. Basically, I come from finance background. I'm a CMA by education. uh i did have a job in equity research and then i switched to marketing because i found it very interesting and this topic that we're discussing today uh that's very interesting to me because i have a mix of uh, my education is in finance and i work in marketing so convergence of these two topics is very interesting for me nice ajit now i will request you to start your presentation from your side absolutely let me just share my screen yes please Yeah, is it visible now? Yes, it is visible. Okay. So, uh just Right. So what we are going to talk about is a uh, goal setting and measurement for content marketing. Basically, I work in content marketing which is your social media content, your the content on your blog and how that drives revenue and income for online companies. right i mainly work with saas companies but in the past i've also worked with uh, other companies that work or sell offline products uh i'm going to streamline this uh, presentation to you know just give you the actionable insights on how you can set goals and how you can uh, track your marketing roi because there's a lot of noise around uh, how these two come together right so what i'm going to give you today is a road map that you can use as an a to c for setting marketing goals and measuring your financial performance through marketing right so let's just get started with the first slide right so why do you really need goals for b2b marketing right uh, you can just set goals uh, have your coffee and just let marketing work on its own can you not uh what i've seen from my experience is that uh, the best performing b2b marketers keep things simple and the way to keep it simple is to be very specific with your goals right uh you can use the smart uh, framework if i you probably heard about this framework a million times uh it tells you to keep your goals specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound these are five parameters that can help you establish goals that are actionable you can take action and look at the actions that you taken on how you gotten from point a to point b right uh, here's an example right uh, for example improve the conversion rate on your product product's landing page by 
over the next quarter with the help of a UX designer. This goal tells you uh, how you're going to improve on something, how much you're going to improve on something, and how you're going to do it, right? So once you set your goals, how do you measure them? Uh, but before that, I think I have one more slide here. Uh, this was a very important and interesting statistic, uh, statistic that I wanted to share. Uh, this is a report from Content Marketing Institute. The Content Marketing Institute is uh, a shrine for content marketers and uh, they roll out this report each year. Uh, they survey content marketers uh, in the B2B area and they tell uh, everybody how their uh, strategy was, what they used for the marketing channels and uh, etc. So this report from 2019 specifically gives you a very interesting statistic. It shows that 72% of the most successful B2B content marketers measure their content marketing ROI. Measurement has a very critical role to play here because if you're not measuring your uh, content marketing efforts, how do you know how uh, and how far your strategies have been successful and what strategies you need to change or evolve into something else, right? So this is something you should do as a B2B marketing uh, team, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so you can find this information on Forbes' website. That's where I got it from. Uh, so uh, the CEO of Advantages, uh, friend Bitterman Gross, she used a very interesting approach to uh, setting marketing goals. Uh, she said that you can divide your marketing goals into two categories. One is brand-oriented matrix and other is revenue-oriented matrix. Uh, so our discussion is going to be on the revenue side of things today, right? But it's also important to mention brand oriented metrics just because it's also a very important part of a B2B marketing efforts. Uh, brand oriented metrics help you, uh, you know, get a sense of how your brand's awareness is within the market that you're operating in. Uh, it measures your brand's awareness, uh, how people react to your brand's marketing material. Uh, when you talk about something like, uh, let's say, social media engagement, you're essentially talking about a brand-oriented metric. People are engaging with your post because they resonate with it. That's not necessarily going to drive revenue for your company, right? So that's something you also need to focus on. Now let's go to the revenue side of things. That's where our discussion is going to be today. Uh, Revenue-oriented metrics uh, give you a financial idea of how marketing connects with your financial statements, right? For example, what I've said here is uh, revenue-oriented uh, metrics measure the number of buyers that turn into paid customers. Uh, when you market uh, to your audience, uh, you're not doing that in a silo. You're doing it to an audience uh, and you want that audience to react to that marketing collateral and buy your product, right? That's what, that's what marketing means. So things like CLV, that's customer lifetime value, CAC is uh, customer acquisition cost. These are things that are going to tell you how your marketing is bringing customers to your product or to your website and how they are converting it. Financial metrics and sales metrics are both revenue based metrics. Sales drive your revenue and financial metrics give you further insight into how that revenue, you know, drives down into your bottom line. Uh, other than that, we're going to dive in deeper into this into the next slide, but uh, it's, it's also important to mention that uh, vanity metrics are a real threat, right? Uh, you probably have heard marketers talk about uh, X number of followers and X number of views on your video. These metrics are important if you are a content creator, but not really if you're a brand. Uh, if you have X number of followers, that doesn't really translate into a revenue based metric that can to an extent help you drive your brand oriented metrics further. For example, if you have a high number of followers that is probably going to translate to higher engagement on your social media posts, right? But that's necessarily not going to bring you any additional revenue. So that's why vanity metrics should be, I wouldn't say they should be ignored because they also have some sort of value but they shouldn't be used directly for your marketing performance, uh, for gauging your marketing performance. Okay, so how do you set your goals? Uh, 
B2B goal setting isn't a plain vanilla process, right? The B2B buyer's journey is fairly complex. Uh, when you talk about B2C, let's uh, deviate from a topic for a moment. When you talk about B2C, you're selling to a customer. Uh, the customer makes their decisions on their own. Maybe they have to ask a family, maybe their spouse, but that's the extent of it, right? Now bring that decision-making process into a B2B context and you will see that there are layers of decision-making. You need to look at who you're marketing to. For example, uh, if you are a SaaS solution that helps with financial management. And I write for a company called Mosaic. Uh, they provide their uh, B2B customers with a dashboard where they can view all of their financial metrics and uh, ARR, MRR, whatever metrics that you can uh, think of. So who, am, who are they marketing to? They are marketing to the financial function of a specific business, right? When someone from the financial team, let's say the CFO, reads Mosaic's content and how it's valuable to their team, to their business, they need to present this uh, idea to their board, maybe to the CEO, whoever the decision maker is. It's not that they can make this decision on their own because it affects their budget as well, right? so that they don't have the authority to do that, at least in most cases. So there are layers of decision making. Plus, uh, B2B buyers tend to avoid sales reps. Uh, I haven't added the statistic here, but if you look online, you'll find that only 5% of a B2B, market, uh, B2B decision maker's time is spent talking to an actual sales rep. Why is that? Because B2B marketers uh, try and focus on doing the research by themselves online, not offline. So that's why content marketing is one of the key uh, digital marketing techniques that you can use for marketing your business to a B2B audience, right? So how do you do that? Uh, let's use Dave uh, McClure's AARRR framework. Uh, you can search for the pirate uh, funnel, pirate sales funnel method, and you'll see these uh, steps listed there as well. But what I'm going to show you is how you can use each of these B2B stages, B2B buyer's journey stages, for setting specific goals that you can measure and translate into financial performance. It starts with acquisition. Whenever you, uh, let's say you write a blog post, right? What you're doing is you're putting out marketing collateral uh, with an intention to provide value to your audience hoping that they, uh, you'll grow your brand's awareness and maybe they'll click on your call to action at the bottom of the blog, right? When they click on that call to action, you're essentially generating marketing qualified leads, which is MQLs. These leads are forwarded to the sales teams. That's the end of your acquisition stage. And for that stage, you need to increase your MQLs, right? If you, let's say you generated 100,000 leads for this quarter, right? Uh, marketing qualified leads. What you can set your goal to is you need to increase this goal to, let's say you want to increase MQLs by 20% and you want to grow them to 120,000 MQLs for the next quarter. Uh, you can also increase your social media engagement as we talked in the last slide. Social media engagement uh, tells you about your brand's awareness. You want to grow your awareness hoping that people, specifically your B2B audience, will engage with your brand and try and get in uh, touch with your sales team hopefully. That's a marketing qualified lead, right? Let's go to the next stage. That's activation. Once your sales team receives a sales qualified lead, right? They are going to try and convert those leads into paying customers. And that's where your customers actual, you know, interaction with your business starts. So for activation, what you can do is uh, you can set goals for your, for increasing your sales qualified leads and increasing your conversion rates. For example, Let's, we've discussed how it works with a blog. Let's say you have a landing page and uh, somebody directly search, uh, searches for, uh, performs a branded search, let's say on Google. Uh, they say uh, XYZ is your brand's name. They search for XYZ product name, right? They'll end up on your landing, landing page probably hoping that you've uh, optimized your uh, website for SEO. And uh, they'll look at your landing page. They'll uh, look at your value proposition. They'll try and share this landing page with uh, others on their team and hopefully they'll convert, right? They'll try and get in touch with your sales team and your sales team will be able to convert those customers into paying customers, leads into paying customers. Now you have generated revenue. This is where you're 
starting to reap the benefits of uh, the financial side of marketing, right? Marketing has worked for you. You are generating revenue and you're going to make profit out of it. That is the end of stage one. But then comes retention. This is specifically important if you are a SaaS brand. How does a SaaS brand work? Uh, software service brands uh, use mainly revenue uh, to gauge their financial performance. The reason is the biggest expense for a SaaS brand is their employee expense uh, that they need for providing customer support. But that also means that they have a profit margin on average of, of about 70 to 80 percent, which means their revenue is a good indicator of their net profit margin as well. So uh, retention is key for SaaS brands because the higher the retention, the higher the contract value, right? If they are seeing a lot of churn, if customers are signing up, then dropping out a quarter later after their plans have expired, it it's a big problem for their scalability. And it, this also applies to other B2B brands. If you have a customer and you want to retain, for example, if you, I also write, let's say for uh, uh, Epic or uh, CPQ, right? Uh, it's a CPQ and they help people uh, view, 3D, uh, view a 3D rendering of the product, uh, of an engineering product on the website. An e-commerce website has used their product for about two months. Um, they are not seeing a lot of results and they want to opt out of that plan, right? They'll just uh, finish their quarter uh, quarter's worth of subscription and they'll never renew. So how does that work out for Epic or CPU? Not really profitable, right? Because they have earned three months worth of revenue, but what happens beyond that period? It's not really sustainable, right? The entire premise of software as a service starts to, you know, uh, seem not very profitable here. So re for retention, you need to you need to minimize churn, and there's no magic formula for this. You need to have a good product that offers value and good customer support. That is literally the only way to minimize churn. Once you've done that, this is basically not even on the marketing side of things, right? This is mo mostly on the customer experience side of things. Once you've started to minimize churn, you want to go to the next stage. You want your existing customers to bring your new customers. That's essentially marketing via your customers, right? You're no longer trying to, I mean, you, are, you probably are producing blog posts and uh, marketing videos, but to gain momentum with your marketing, you want your customers to act as advocates of your brand, right? You want to give them an experience that they spread your brand's uh, value proposition through word of mouth. And that is where referrals come through. Uh, come through. So for this stage of your B2B sales funnel, uh, you can set goals for your CLV, that's customer lifetime value. More referrals means a higher customer lifetime value. Uh, other metrics are average uh, recurring revenue and uh, annual customer value as well. Those are just, you know, different ways of saying the same thing. You want to produce revenue through referrals. Basically, you want to put your marketing on automation, right? The next stage is revenue. Now, this is where we want to focus, right? Once you've brought the customer through all the four stages down to a stage where they are consistently delivering revenue to your brand. So how do you measure this? You want to look at your net promoter score. It's basically the number of customers that are promoting your brand. There's a formula for this. It's fairly simple. Then there's viral coefficient. That's that essentially measures the number of customers that each of your existing customers are bringing to your brand, right? These are different ways of measuring how you can scale your revenue at the last stage of your funnel. Beyond this, you don't need to do anything. Your brand essentially becomes a cash cow if you are able to, you know, consistently generate revenue through these tactics. So that's how you uh, set goals for your B2B brand. So once you've set these goals, how do you start measuring them? Hmm. Uh, now, we are going to talk in the context of digital marketing because if you're working offline, you need to create an Excel sheet and that's not really a scalable way to do things, right? So this is where, you know, a platform like Aritech could provide a lot of value because uh, it gives you a, a comprehensive view of your marketing efforts on a single dashboard. But marketing... Uh, Measuring your marketing goals can be a little tricky because let's uh, look at why. You have five stages of a funnel, right? 
you have different uh, goals for each of those stages. Probably at least three uh, marketing metrics that you want to measure for all of these stages. That's at least 15 uh, marketing uh, measurement uh, tactics that you want to track at a time. You are not going to be able to do that with a spreadsheet because you're going to be uh, using other tools as well. If you are using paid ads, using uh, SEO, for example, you're going to get some data out of Google's uh, search console. You're going to put that into a spreadsheet. That's not really a scalable way of doing things. So why not automate things that are mundane and don't really require any human effort? That's where Editec can help you, right? But there are other, of course, uh, tools that can, help, that can help you as well. For example, uh, you can use MailChimp for uh, automating your email marketing. Or you can use uh, Google Analytics or Google Search Console for tracking your SEO, or, or SEO goals. Technology has a huge role to pay, uh, play here. Uh, let's say you use HubSpot, right? You probably have uh, heard of HubSpot or you use, if you are in India, you probably use something like uh, Tele. If you are a traditional business, you probably use Tele, right? Uh, you want your marketing platform to be able to integrate with these platforms. And I'll tell you why. Uh, let's say you want to try and uh, track your customer churn, right? Your CRM probably has all of this data. If your if a customer is dropping out of your pipeline, your CRM has this data, right? You don't need to explicitly go out and look for this data, pull that data into a spreadsheet, and then do, your, do the entire analysis. If your uh, Martech Mar platform integrates with a CRM like HubSpot, it can automatically pull data out of those uh, cards. You can create cards on HubSpot, right, for each customer. It can uh, pull that data out of the card and uh, automatically migrate the data into the Martech platform. The Martech platform will then uh, use all of this data to come up with all of the metrics that you've listed on the Martech platform. So technology has a big role to play here in streamlining your marketing processes. Plus, uh, your marketing team has a lot to do, right? Uh, when your marketing team focuses on mundane tasks, you're essentially paying a part of your salary for parts of the marketing process that you can automate. So you're essentially paying for things you don't have to necessarily pay for. So that also reduces your marketing ROI over time, right? Right, so that essentially ends the B2B marketing process and how it ties into your financial performance. But what happens once you are at the, let's say you are at the end of the current financial year, you've looked at how your marketing has performed and how it has translated to financial gains for your company, right? What's next? What do you do for the next year? Now you have a set of uh, metrics and data in front of you. What do you do with that data? The first thing you want to do is you want a roadmap for how you can optimize that data for the next financial year, right? So you continue to make efforts towards optimizing your performance. Once you've exhausted all marketing channels, you don't need to, and I would also go a step further and say you shouldn't uh, use all of the marketing channels because if you're targeting a B2B audience, you want very specific channels that are highly effective for your business, right? So you don't want to dilute or spread yourself to thin or way too many marketing channels. So once you have the marketing channels, the metrics that you want to focus on, you want to optimize your efforts. If Even if you started to see results, there is always room for improvement in the digital marketing uh, area, right? Because your traffic is being diverted to some other B2B platforms website as well. If you have a competitor and they are putting out blogs, some of your traffic is probably going to their blog. You want to identify what channels is the traffic going uh, to their website from. And you want to try and take authority of that website, right? To bring that uh, share of the market to your uh, brand as well. Right. In uh, optimizing these efforts, you also need to spend money, right? If, for example, if you run a blog, you want to, let's say you want to run a link building program. That's going to cost you money. So you want to factor these uh, uh, into your next financial year's uh, marketing plan and budget for it. Budgeting has a key role to play here because once you're at the end of the financial year, you cannot go back and change things. 
because once you have that uh, entire spend in front of you the roi is what it is but if you have a, if you have a budget you can plan for an uh, roi that you want to achieve by the year end based on your marketing efforts uh you can use a practical uh, roi that you want to achieve keep it achievable don't keep it you know something that's unbelievable once you have an achievable roi you can just plan out your marketing efforts towards that roi and work out the numbers uh, on your budget and present it to your decision makers right this can also include new tools new b2b platforms for example if you plan on uh, using editic for the next financial year right you can just factor in the cost of editic into your budget and then present it to the decision makers and show how that is going to impact your financial statements in your marketing roi right so that's the entire b2b uh, journey of how you can start marketing uh for a b2b audience how you can uh, use goal setting as a way to drive financial performance for your b2b marketing efforts and how those uh, results manifest in your financial statements uh i think that's uh, it from my side meghmala uh if you have any questions or if you want to take it uh, further please take so uh, from my side i really think ki it is a really insightful presentation and it is such a great learning i hope it will be a great learning experience for all the audience as well who will watch the presentation and i'll see you in the next webinar on the 21st july thank, thank you. you so much mekmala thank you very much thank okay. you very much yeah ajun uh, just